You know, one of the great things about being a tax lawyer is that I'm very lucky. I associate with very successful people, and I've met many, many very successful folks. I mean, let's face it, the homeless don't come to me. And I, I, there, I came to three, uh, four, four criteria of what it takes to be a really stinking rich in this country. How many people would like to know what it takes to be a multi, multi-millionaire in this country? North, North America, okay? I'm gonna give you the answer. And, and you're gonna find I'm pretty spot on. There was a book written called by, who, uh, by a gentleman named Denko who interviewed multimillionaires, and he actually came to the same conclusion. The book he wrote was something you may have heard of called The Millionaire Next Door. Well, here are the, here are the criteria of, of what he said and I have found. Number one, almost every multimillionaire in the United States, and the same thing is true in Canada, said, if you want to be a multimillionaire, you've got to get, get your taxes down to the legal minimum. I was the warm-up act for Donald Trump in a lot of these big mega events. He always used to say, you want to be a multimillionaire, you've got to get your taxes down to the legal minimum. I met Sam Walton when he was alive. Same thing. You want to be a multimillionaire, you've got to get your taxes down to the legal minimum. When I, when I, talk with, I was talking with Sandy and Keith Cunningham, what do you think they were talking to me about? Taxes. All right? Bill Gates just set up a big foundation. Why do you think he did that? Because he's a nice guy? Yeah, but he also wanted to say taxes. Okay? That is the first criteria. And that's very different than the average person. The average person, when they think of an account, what do you think of? You think of somebody boring, you think of some, you think, uh, drudgery, you gotta get all your stuff together. Millionaires don't look at that. They actually look forward to going to their account because they get tax planning advice. And they get a, and they get a lot of information that, you know, just doesn't get disseminated, as you can tell from the exam. So that's number one. Second thing is, you think to become rich, you gotta really um, invest in risky things. Buy a lot, do some stock trading. Nope. Well, maybe you buy a lot of real estate. Maybe they made all mo their money in real estate. Yeah, some did. Absolutely. But not the majority. Well, what do they do? The 85% of all multimillionaires in the United States and Canada were, did one thing that the average person doesn't do. They were savers. They saved the minimum of 10% of what they made every year, and they invested, and they never touched that money. Never. Not for the kids' education, only for retirement. So you want to save a minimum of how much? 10%. And the third thing was they diversified their investments. Those of you who heard me up here talked about I'm a real defensive investor. They didn't put all their money in, in, in the stock market. They didn't put all their money in one stock. They didn't buy Enron stock. They diversified. They might have owned mutual funds. They might have owned real estate investment trusts. They might have owned some real estate. They might have some money abroad getting advantage of the, of the, of the foreign currency. They diversified. So what's the rule? One. They get your taxes down to the legal minimum. Two, save a minimum of how much? 10%. And three, diversify their investments. And I'll give you one other thing. Most very, Harvey McKay said this in his book, uh, Swim with the Sharks. I don't know if anybody's read, anybody read anything by Harvey McKay? Okay. Very, very good writer. Very good business consultant. And in, in his book, he has a great quote. And I want to mention the quote. What Harvey said was, when a fool with money meets a man of experience, the man of experience will get the money, and the fool will get some experience. Okay? Very wealthy individuals are always being thieves of knowledge. They're always learning. They're always getting better. One of the things I said, um, I, was t I was telling um, Greg the other day, I said, I can't believe in today's economy people are cutting back on, on knowledge and learning and, and marketing. If anything, now's the time to really improve. I mean, the people, it's amazing.